This phrase, kids these days, said with such a snide tone of voice, kids these days, gives into a sense of hopelessness and despair that I don't appreciate because I love kids these days. And I want to say, how dare you? How dare you, middle-aged adult, deem yourself so world aware as to judge a life that is just beginning its independence, that is exploring and trying new things? I want to say, how dare you believe that kids these days are not trying to learn, trying new things, and planning on solving problems for the future? I want to say, how dare you think that because you know more through your life experience, an entire generation lacks the capacity to learn to solve problems? Maybe, in some ways, I am still stuck in my teenage years because I want to rage against the adults. How dare you think that kids these days can't rise to the occasion? One of the reasons why this is such a big problem for me is because it implies a lack of understanding for the unique struggles that are happening during young adulthood. It implies a res lack of respect for kids who don't even have responsibility yet. They are being assumed to have the incapability of learning responsibility. Using this phrase is saying that an entire generation folks lacks both the capacity and the capability to learn for the future. I also dislike this phrase because it shows that the speaker doesn't really understand human development, that they don't appreciate the fact that when children are children, they act like children. They have the rest of their lives to act like adults. They will eventually, at least most adults act like adults most of the time. I dislike this phrase because when we say, Ugh, kids these days, we are saying that we do not understand that human societies grow and change over time. That this generation is not facing the exact same problems of the past generations. And that maybe we should acknowledge that new ideas and new attitudes is what it's going to take to solve different problems. There's an internet story that's circulating about this idea of being green. And in it, a young woman, cashier, is helping an older woman check out. It gets to the end, she's about to bag the groceries, and she says, do you want paper or plastic? The old woman doesn't respond immediately. So the young cashier says, you should choose paper. It's more environmentally friendly. Now, we all know that's not the case. They should actually be, re be using reusable cloth bags, but we're going to go with the way the story is. And the old woman responds, huh. when I was a kid, we didn't have being green. When I was a kid, we recycled all the metals we could find. When I was a kid, we returned glass bottles for a small refund. When I was a kid, we reused everything we could. Waste not, want not was the adage. The purpose of the story is to engender sympathy with the older generation. You've got this young know-it-all who is saying that she needs to teach the older generation about how to be green, when in fact, the older generation has lived a life much more in touch with the environment than this young woman can possibly imagine. When I read this story from my mama's Facebook feed, my sympathies immediately went with the younger generation. Maybe that's why I chose to be a high school teacher. And I looked at it through the lens of, but this older woman's generation is the generation that invented plastic bags. And we know that they are a major environmental scourge for kids these days. So maybe there is something to the idea that this young woman has something to share. Because the generation, if we take this story a little bit deeper into plastic bags, I'm gonna call them the plastic generation. The plastic bag was invented in 1960 by a gentleman named Sten Gustav Thulin, who was born in 1914. 
the plastic generation, is the generation that gave us human rights atrocities around the world. We have labor and internment camps, political disappearances for protesting. We have genocides committed because of ethnic, racial, and religious purposes. This is the generation that put economic growth ahead of sustainable global development that seemed to have no concern for the long-term health or environmental actions that were going to take place because of this industrial growth. This is the generation, let us not forget, that invented nuclear war. So maybe there is something to the idea that this young girl has something to share with an older generation about how to be green these days. At the same time, this plastic generation, they did amazing and wonderful things for the human race. This is the generation that laid the advanced mathematical and physics work to be able to put a dog and then a monkey and then a man into space orbiting the earth. This is the generation that sent satellites into the outer planets and it put a human being on our moon. This is the generation that invented the polio vaccine and was able to eradicate smallpox from the human population on this earth. This is the generation that when they saw human rights atrocities being committed, they protested and they created underground networks and they fought in wars and they died to stop those atrocities. Because it isn't a problem of kids those days either. No generation is all good or all bad. No individual human being meets such extreme requirements and certainly no group of human beings. When we look at this through the in lens of history, we see that this accusation has been happening for a long time. Socrates often gets misquoted, so I'm going to go with Horace, a Roman poet who circa 20 BCE wrote, Our father's age was worse than our grandsires. We, their sons, are yet more worthless than they, and in our turn, we will give the world a progeny yet more corrupt. Such hope for the future of humanity. But if it sounds familiar, it's because what, it's what every generation says about the generation that is coming. Although I can appreciate Horace and his acknowledgement of his own generation's failings. The first time I heard this phrase, I was riding in a car with my papa, and a young teenage driver cut him off, and he said, Ugh, kids these days. And I said, yeah, I wonder who raised them. Because really, if we're going to blame an entire generation or any individual in a generation for being uneducated or unaware, shouldn't we blame their parents or maybe their grandparents? Because the kids were not the ones in charge of learning those lessons. The adults were for teaching them. In Horace's book, The Odes, book three, which is where I, the quote came from earlier, uh, he is he discussing all sorts of topics from religion to marriage to wine and friendship. And it's a collection of poems, actually. And I want to think, I wonder what Horace would say if he could read poetry of today, if he could go to a, a spoken word performance or see a live concert. He could hear the words of anyone from Maya Angelou to Nicki Minaj, from Adonis to Drake, Miranda and Beyonce. These are the poets of today. He might appreciate what they have to say. He might wonder how on earth the world is still spinning, or he might blame the parents for kids these days. Beyond the assumptions, the lack of respect, the lack of understanding for societal change, why is this a problem, this phrase? It's a problem because it is untrue. Kids these days are doing amazing things. I set up a lemonade stand to raise money for myself. Alex is doing it to fight childhood cancer. <laughs> 
Kids these days know because of modern technology through sharing and social networking when a disaster strikes and they leap to help as soon as it happens. Kids these days are organizing both fundraisers and donations to help children around the world affected by famine and war, cancer and war, natural disasters, tsunamis and earthquakes and war. And let us not forget that it is not kids these days who started those wars. They're just the soldiers on the front lines. And they have been because kids these days in every generation are always the ones that fight the wars. Why is this a problem? Because it breaks down relationships. And I'm not talking on a global scale. I'm talking about in your first staff room when you've got a new hire, across the dining room table with your high school student, on the phone as your college student has gone off on their own for the first time. It strains relationships. When someone expresses an individual opinion and because you don't agree with their opinion, they get grouped into kids these days, then their opinion is invalidated, whether it's emotionally based or fact-based opinion. They are no longer a person speaking as themselves. They are just a kid who doesn't know any better. And maybe they don't know any better because kids do the same things. Whenever a kid says, you just don't get it, or things were different when you were younger, then kids these days are, the same, are guilty of the same generational grouping. What we see is that when we create a group of know-nothings, we can't change the situation. When we create several groups of know-nothings, then we can't move forward to solve the problems that we need to solve. Kids these days are doing amazing things. And this is why it's important for us to understand that the phrase is also a little bit true. But I would argue that when kids complain or don't seem grateful, we should then as adults look at ourselves and say, what are we doing? Because is it not true that kids these days actually have a right to be a little bit angry that in Beijing they can't play outside because the air is too dirty? the idea that industrial growth was more important than national health? Do teenagers in Syria not have a right to be frustrated and angry that between a totalitarian regime, rebel forces, a terrorist group, and international interference, their lives are crumbling? Do children all over the world not have the right to be frustrated that despite years of international adult consensus, elementary education still is not guaranteed, I say they do have the right. And maybe we can be frustrated with how they express their opinions, but let's be the adults in this situation. Let's take responsibility. We are the adults, right? Maybe we should look inward. There's an innocence to childhood that makes it seem as if everything used to be better. There's an American colloquialism called the, the good old days. Right? Everything was better in the good old days. Back in the good old days, we were grateful, we were respectful, we were hardworking, right? Maybe. Or maybe we just don't remember not being grateful, but we remember being reminded to say thank you. Maybe. We weren't really more respectful. We just don't remember the bratty things we said as much as the trouble we got into for mouthing off. Maybe we weren't really more hardworking. We just don't remember goofing off as much as we did the sweat. And maybe when we look at kids these days working, they're doing a different type of work that we don't even recognize. The reality is that the good old days are a mirage. They're a wonderful picture of the days when we were innocent, when we didn't know any better, because we didn't have responsibility. The good old days are, for every generation, the days in which that generation was not responsible for itself. We just didn't know how bad things were. And then we get to adulthood. This 
time period in our lives when we are taking responsibility and we realize that the, what we thought was freedom is actually just a bunch of hard choices that we have to make. We realize that adulthood is, and Pixar got it right, when childhood is over and it's never going to come back. Adulthood is making these hard decisions and not getting the reward for them, but hoping that your children will get the reward for them. But they don't seem grateful, probably because they just don't know the sacrifices that you're making in the first place. They will. They'll figure it out. About the time that they have to take responsibility, they'll turn back to their parents and their teachers and their coaches and they'll say, geez, this is really hard. Thanks for making those sacrifices. What we're looking at when we move forward is the need to appreciate kids these days. Kids these days are volunteering to build homes despite never having ho known homelessness. Kids these days are working to protect other children from famine, even though fewer people today know starvation. Kids these days are working and realizing that you can have fun when you get stuck in the middle of nowhere. And we shouldn't judge them for having fun. They are volunteering, organizing, and practicing leadership for adulthood. This day that we get to share ideas was organized by kids these days. Kids these days are frantically writing essays that they should have written two months ago. They're cramming for exams. They're realizing that they don't want to work with the people that they thought they were friends with. Kids these days are learning, growing, and experiencing. They are complaining about the adults in their lives because those people just don't understand. Because they are kids who just happen to be growing up these days. So to the adults in the audience and anyone who watches this in the future, I challenge you. I challenge you to go up to a young adult, a teenager or a new college graduate and ask them what they're up to. What are their thoughts? Ask them, even though you, they're probably gonna say nothing to start with, ask them again, not because they're up to no good, but because they are doing amazing and mundane things, all of which are wonderful to hear about. And to my students, my kids, my own sons as well. I hope that for you, kids these days, I hope that these are your good old days. Thank you.